G'day, welcome to Unity with Heaven. My name is Joseph, and today I am with my wonderful daughter, Kimberly. So she was gracious enough to say that she will help me today to minister. So this last three days, uh, I sat with Amy and we just sat one time when we prophesied to 10, 10, 10 in one go. And I said to Kimberly this morning, you know what, Kimmy, this is actually not a good strategy <laughs> because people put their names in the comments and then I have to wait the whole three days before uh, they can get on a new list. So <laughs> I'm, I'm making it even more difficult for myself, really. What we're going to do is every single day, I'm going to go through the comments. I'm going to choose 10 names of people that write their names in the comments. And then I'll either get Kimmy or Amy, if Amy is available, Amy is today in, in Joburg with worship. Uh, or I'll ask Ian or I don't know, maybe Shamane, but uh, I'll, I'll find someone. Else I'll just do it by myself, doesn't matter. But I'll get someone and then we'll sit and we'll minister every single day to 10 people. So uh, it was about... Hmm, a week and a half ago, uh, I was I was there in my bedroom and I was praying before the Lord and I and I really said to the Lord, Lord, I want to have direction from you. What do you want me to do? You know, sometimes you expect the Lord to give you like this five-year plan. This is what I want you to do. All right. But then the Lord said to me very clearly, He said, Joseph, I want you to every single day prophesy to ten people. All right. And so then I said to the Lord, Lord. For how long is this? Is this indefinitely or is this just... Then God said, just start. And <laughs> at, at some point, he'll tell me again what goes on. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And uh, Kimmy didn't decide it. But um, since she's my daughter and she's a wonderful cook. And she uh, <laughs> is actually finishing a school also. So um, she's just uh, uh, awesome help to me. And so she said to me, Dad, don't worry. I'm here for you. I will help uh, you. We can minister to people. All right. So that's my little introduction for today. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to minister to the first person. And then Kimmy's going to minister to the second person. We can go back and forth. So in case you wonder, how on earth is, are these people this prophesying like this? Okay. So I don't go beforehand and pray for hours to get a word for each one of you. What I do, I close my eyes. The Lord gives me visions, He gives me thoughts, feelings, and awareness of what He's doing about the person that I'm praying. Now, the advantage that I uh, have, I don't know anybody that's on the list. Uh, I know a leader, um, personally, uh, but as far as I can see, that's the only person I've ever there physically uh, spoken to the person and met the person, all right? So, um, so... What I do, I gave my imagination to God and I, and I did it a long time ago. I think I was 1995. I was at a camp and uh, there was a prophet there and he said, we must give our imagination to God. And, and I prayed earnestly before the Lord and I said, Lord, I give you my imagination. And so what happens then? Now, I don't allow rubbish to come into my imagination. So I don't watch stuff and get it into my brain that I'm not supposed to watch. And so when God speaks to me, he just puts things into my brain. And I've learned how to trust him and to hear his voice and to kind of decipher a little bit between if it's my own thought or if it's God's thought. Uh, and it's just practice. Um, and then I just give to you what God gives to me. That, that's the process. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, Kimmy, obviously, he's been her whole life with us. And so we've always been prophesying to people. God has called us. Um, I, had a, I had a desire when I was uh, 17 years old. I'm now 48. Uh, that I cried before the Lord, like tears coming out, Lord, I desire to prophesy, will you please teach me how to do it? And then the Lord helped me, put me in contact with people that could mentor me. Um, but I already at that stage prophesied, but I just felt I didn't know how to do it. And But the Lord helped me. So God is God is absolutely faithful. All right, that's, now that was the second intro already. All right, so now let's, let's start. All right, so the first person here is Philip. Dimov. All right. So Philip, um, um, I saw that was a lady that put your name in the comments. So I sincerely hope that she spoke to you before she wrote your name down there. And I just want to say to each one, as a rule, I don't like to prophesy to someone if the handle is not the same as the name of the person. Because what happens 
is I could, for instance, put my mother-in-law's name on the list. And she actually never wanted the word, but I wanted her to get a word. And then later on, I tell her, okay, here's a word. Then she says, but what right does these people have to, to prophesy to me? Because I never gave my consent. So as a rule, I don't like to minister to someone if they handle. So if you, if you want to uh, put your name on, but you know your name and the handle doesn't match up, then just write there, hi, this is my YouTube channel. And my name is, um, you know, John Smith. Uh, although my, my YouTube channel is called Honey From Heaven, you know, <laughs> um, then, then, then just write there, this is still my, my channel. And then let's say your wife is Sarah Smith. Then you can say, so my wife Sarah Smith is with me. We use the same channel. And she would also like to have a word and you can write the name. If you just, just clarify it for me, because I, I, I want to have good manners. And I would not appreciate it if someone ministers to me if I didn't give my consent. So that's why I don't like ministering to someone if I'm not 100% sure they really want to do it. So, so Philip, um, I'm going to share with you what God showed me because I, I just sat now and I saw your name and then the Lord immediately started speaking to me. I'm going to share with you what God said to me. But in the future, if you want to have a word, just write your name again and then just add a few words just to explain to me to let, so I can make sure that you actually wanted your name on there and you wanted to receive a word, then we'll minister again to you. Also, if you wonder about how frequently should I receive prophetic ministry, I believe that God has given the gift of prophecy to the body of Christ and every person that's a child of God should pray to each, for each other and prophesy to one another. So for my children and for my people in the congregation, I also rec always recommend to them at least once a month just sit so that someone can pray for you and share with you what God is saying. Now, the main source of information that I get is not from other people prophesying to me. It's from my personal devotion and my walk with God. But you know what? Sometimes people prophesy to me and it's right on. And then at the moment when a word comes in, the Holy Spirit says to me, I've try been trying to tell that to you, but you haven't listened. Now I, I, I'm getting someone else to say it to you. I remember when we were in America, then um, I was sitting in a crowd and the prophet was there and he said that guy and he had me stand up. He didn't know me from anywhere and he, and he said to me, the Lord says that your time in America is up. You have to go back to South Africa. So that was after seven years of training and I really grew in that church and I became a leader and I really were in a comfort zone. Uh, and I, I thought, okay, I need to go back at some point. But then that guy said, the Lord says, you'll go back to South Africa and you'll prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. That was the, the whole word. And um, when I came home, I just started crying. Uh, and I said to Claire, God has spoken. We have to go back home. And it was within months uh, we, we, we came back to South Africa. Uh, it's clear, at that stage, Claire was almost ready to, uh, to give birth to Shannon, our second oldest. So we had Shannon. And then a few weeks later, then we came, came back to South Africa. Okay. So... Um, that was my third introduction. <laughs> so now we're going to definitely minister. Okay, so Philip, um, what the Lord showed me is three periods of five years that you went through. Period one, period two, period three. Each one five years long. Each one of them is something new that you learned. But each one of them was also very hard. It's like um, you learned how to be fruitful, but it was in dry times, in hard times, on a hard taskmaster master almost like the israelites when they were in egypt they were slaves and the egyptians were really abusing them and i felt that you've gone through a hard time but the lord has built in you his word he's built in your faith he's built in your maturity and then the lord showed me three bottles of wine the one wine is five years old the other wine is 10 years old and the other wine is 15 years old and it's like the wine of the maturity of god that has been built in your life over this last 15 years and i felt that the lord says son this is now the time of your breakthrough because you've learned those lessons you've said yes lord i'm going to be obedient to you i'm i'm submitting and i'm surrendering my will to you and now i felt that the lord says as you come underneath his lordship he's going to sit you in a seat of authority and you're going to start seeing god move in your life and so I just felt that this is a time of breakthrough. And so don't discount this 15 years that's gone th through your life. Because this was a time when the Lord was really 
building your character and he was uh, teaching you things, these uh, skills that you've learned that you're going to use in the future. God bless you. Uh, amen. Uh, Philip, please leave us a comment. This next word is for Christine. Christine, the Lord shows me how he is coming and he is centering you. And the Lord shows me how how every day he wants you to, to, to find yourself in his presence. Always, always looking for his presence, but also looking for his glory. That you don't just feel him around but you sense his light his warmth and you see it with your eyes that is the deep relationship the lord wants with you he doesn't just want this amazing feeling he wants deeper he wants you to go in deeper to press in to push yourself to push your flesh to the limit that it almost falls off you completely because you are surrounded by his glory and not just his presence which is wonderful but the lord wants to take you in deeper Be blessed. Okay. christine god bless you uh, so Brenda, um, uh, I remember years ago, um, uh, I was attending a Ian Clayton conference, I think it was like in 2007, um, and, and he um, had the session for the ones that wanted to, we could get up early, I think 6 o'clock in the morning while everybody was still sleeping, and we could just come and pray with him. And so at that session, I saw how the Lord took out um, my old filthy garments and then I saw an angel and he started to fly around me and he was putting on me a uh, armor of light, but he was weaving it. And I, I saw when I was praying now for you that the Lord is taking filthy garments and the filthy garments is really years that, that has gone past uh, in your life. Um, uh, cycles that has repeated uh, and it's not all bad. But I see how the Lord is removing that filthy garments on you and how this angelic being is coming and he's weaving around you this armor of light. Now the scripture talks specifically there about the armor of light, the armor of righteousness and the armor of God. And so the armor of light is that first layer that, that comes on our life. And that's why uh, John even said that we need to walk in the light. The blood of Jesus washes us clean so that we can walk in the light. And I just see how the Lord is washing you clean. He's making you pure like a virgin. Um, and He's putting that armor of light uh, on your life. And you start to, to shine with His glory. You learn how to walk with God. Now, when you walk with God, you see Him face to face. Uh, he's with you. You experience His presence with you. But it's also a protection mm -hmm. that comes in your life because of that armor of light. God bless you, Brenda. Amen. This next word is for Christina. The Lord says, make yourself available to be used by Him. If you keep yourself like in closed doors, very in, in a small circle, the Lord shows me how you can do a lot, but He wants you to do so much more. When you go and you allow yourself to be a servant onto the Lord, onto people that the Lord has placed in you to serve, the Lord says that you will grow when you serve, that you will grow when you go the extra mile for others unto the Lord and the Lord says that I have placed everything everything that you need in your hands he has withheld nothing from you but make yourself available to him that he can bless you even more be blessed hey Christina uh, God bless you so Christina I know on one of the videos that me and Amy did we also put your name but um, I don't know how I made that mistake but I thought it was Christian uh, the toy and so we, we put there, but I saw there you write in the comments that you actually knew it was for you. And I, and I thought really bad about that. So I, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to write your name again on the, <laughs> on the comments to make sure that we give you a proper word. And it's your name that's written there. But uh, Christina, God loves you very, very much. And I, and I believe that the Lord says that uh, he will not pass you by. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Bible, Zacchaeus was in the tree and then he, he just wanted to see Jesus but Jesus actually called him to come down and say today I'm eating at your house mm -hmm. and I believe that this is the day of visitation that the Lord has for you in your life God bless you Christina so Alida uh, the Lord shows me a, a big dancing hall and so as you walk into this dancing hall you meet people and it's like a group dance so you dance with God but then you meet different people and you guys, you know how they do those line dances in the old days and how you dance with different people and there's a lot of joy, a lot of music. Uh, and then the Lord said to me, that dancing hall is actually your work. And so I, I feel that the Lord says, don't rush it because you don't want to uh, rush a dance. Uh, you you want to listen to the music and you want to meet the people. Uh, you want to have some something to drink 
and then dance with the people and, and just have fun and laugh. And and but they there's two more halls. Now you want to get to the second hall, so now you want to rush through this one. But I felt that the Lord says this is time. So it, it could take six years or a, uh, six months, sorry, or a year. Then I saw a second hall uh, that was coming, uh, and I believe that second hall um, uh, is family. And then again, there's a breakthrough in the area of family for you, uh, in the area of your house, in the area of uh, your family members, your relationships with your family members. Um, I know at some point your family will grow. I don't, I'm not saying this all is about you having babies and things like that, but it could also be. But I saw again in a family hall how you all as a family dance together and how everyone gets really close. And I felt that the Lord says you're not only going to be close to Barent, uh, but you're also going to be close to other family members in your life. Barent is also going to be close to other fam family members. There's also people, friends in your life that's going to be like family. So, you know, uh, um, Jesus' family came to him and then people said, your family is outside here. They want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, who's my family? He says, you are my father, my mother, my brother, my sister. You guys, you're my family. And I just felt that the Lord says, your family is going to be a mix. Some of them is going to be blood family. Some of them is going to be from your father's side, your mother's side. Some of them is going to be from Baron's mother and father's side. Some of them is going to be just people that the Lord puts in your life as part of your family. Okay. Then I saw a third hall. Okay. Again, that was the dance. Then a third hall. Then in that hall was the ministry dance. And so there you meet new people again and you dance with them and you build relationships with them. And again, that takes another six months or a year. So now you are a go getter. So you want to just slam open the first door, slam open the second door, slam open the third door, get all the ducks in line and go. And I just felt that the Lord says, no, 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 slow down. You know, uh, uh, in, in today's time, it's like we want to go somewhere. So we get in our Ferrari and we're going to go, you know, at the maximum speed, 120 kilometers an hour. And we're going to go where we need to go. But in the old days, they had a horse with a buggy and they would sit there and the two horses would trot and they would look at the beautiful trees and smell the flowers and just enjoy the ride. And I just felt that's what the Lord wants you to do. Just enjoy the ride. And the Lord is so pleased with you. He's proud of you. You've done what he's called you to do. And so if you feel that stuff is not going as fast as I want, I don't feel the Lord says he needs to go that fast. Mm. Just slow down and enjoy life. That, that's what the word that the Lord gives me. God bless you. Amen. Alida, please give us a comment. Thanks for this for Rina. Rina, the Lord shows me how, how in the Bible the Lord told Moses to, to take blood and put it on all of the doors. And I see how the Lord is saying how your your home should be a place where the glory of God is is dripping from the walls that you that you do not change. It's it's not it's like a two face. You hear how people are one way at church and they're like another way at home. Home. like it's it's completely too different like how you pray at church is how you pray at home in the secret place so I hear the Lord saying that it is a constant relationship with him it is a constant attitude of surrender of serving to the Lord it is not one I'm this when I'm here and I'm this when I'm there but I am always a child of God and the Lord wants to remind you, you are always his child. You are always his prized position. He will always fight for you. And he's wanting you to allow that glory to, to spread throughout your house, in uh, your physical home. Be blessed. Hey, Rina, God bless you. Uh, Rina, uh, I, I feel there's a hunger in you. Mm. Uh, and the Lord says, because you are hungry, you will be satisfied. Uh, and again, you know, w when we are satisfied by the Lord, uh, it's not like we put a big old plate of spaghetti and we just try to gulp the whole thing down in two minutes. Uh, it's it's like when you eat a delicacy, uh, every taste matters. And so mm -hmm. that's also with the Word of God when we read the Bible. Yes, we can take two chapters and we can quickly, five minutes, read through them, speed read. But you have to take every word that Jesus says into consideration and eat it like a delicacy and he's going to feed you and I feel that the Lord is going to satisfy you far beyond you can imagine and not only just in knowledge but also with a um, with his love 
how are you going to feel but i'm hugged by god i don't know if you even while you're in your bed just lie down and you say lord i'm i'm can i receive an embrace from you and then the lord comes and he embraces you and i just see how the lord embraces you and he says you are mine you are valuable to me all right god bless you Rina. okay krista all right so krista it's an interesting one the lord showed me you're moving from one house to another house okay now when you are in your father's house uh, definitely in our house like Kimberly is still in my house she has a room she gets to eat any and all of the food that's in our house you know when she we got a big bowl with bananas and uh, nachis and there's some some nectarines and apples she doesn't even have to ask she just go and grab some and these we've got always uh, bottles of water she goes and she gets her water when she wants one if she wants to cook something an egg whatever she throws it on a pan and cook it or pop, pop, popcorn or whatever if she wants to use the computer or watch the tv or use the bathroom uh, shower whatever she this is her house she can do whatever she wants even if she wants to plant something in a garden she can tell hey i'm gonna plant something and we're all excited about what's happening in our garden okay there's not always a lot happening in our garden so if something's happening then it's exciting okay so she's in our house there's rules in our house but there's also benefits in the house now if she one day gets married then what's gonna happen is she can still have a fruit and an apple and a pear and things like that but really she should now be at her house and they should buy their own fruit and they should have their own things and go on with their lives and we we'd love to have them visit but they must kind of now build their house so it's like a new house that they're forming and we'll help them and support them as much as we can okay now i felt that the lord says you're moving out from the old house to the new house so you have to build a new house but i felt that that was not only physical i felt it was spiritual so if you're in a church and, and a church has a certain amount of anointing and the revelation then that's available to you if you go to a new church or a new cell group or a new uh, group of believers and there's more anointing there's more power then you have access to that anointing and that power just like you had for the natural and i felt that the lord says you're going to a house where there's going to be no, more power there's going to be more resources the house is going to be aligned with the authority of god and the curses that was on the old house is not going to be on the new house and so the lord says even as someone that's going through a baptism someone that's going through a marriage contract you know that marriage vows i'm cutting off the old house and the curses and the restrictions of the old house over your life and so don't allow the voices of the old house to take you off the path but enjoy the fruit of this new house where i'm putting and of course you have to take on the responsibilities also that comes with the new house god bless you and then uh krista please give us a comment saying so it is for tanya tanya the lord shows me how how he's showing you how the river is is forming in your life how he is he's sh he's opening your eyes to see how he is coming in and filling you up and even with others the lord is like making your eyes very sensitive to see where is he moving where is the lord where has he placed his his finger i see the lord is is showing to you like if he wants you to pray for somebody you will just see like a light on their head or the or, or just like a finger the lord is pointing he's like tanya I, I need you there i want you to be here you see what i'm doing there and I, and the lord is really opening your eyes see but with the river that is for you to see how that glory that river that flows from beneath his throne how it comes into you and how it satisfies you and how you can release that when you see the lord has placed his hand on somebody that you may that you will go and pray for them and that that river that that flows from his throne will activate and be released out of you be blessed yeah uh, tonya i absolutely believe that there's giftings in your life that's sitting stagnant and because the river of god is not always flowing through your life that giftings are not activated and so that's why it's important for you to get it and what kimmy said is 100 percent. and so one of the things that you can do is worship and praying in tongues um when you do those things then you and you you can actually feel the flow of the spirit mm. then you're going to see how the lord is going to give you strategies from heaven and start to activate the giftings in you god bless you all right so maggie um uh, uh i was praying for you uh, and the lord showed to me 
uh, that he's breaking the spirit of lack, um, the spirit of poverty, uh, not enough, the whole time struggling. I see how the Lord is breaking that off of your life. It's almost like the enemy put a ring on your finger that says that you're going to be on lack. And I see how the Lord says today I'm destroying that that demonic attack against your life. And it's not like a short thing, it's a long term thing. And I almost feel like Jesus when he was casting the, the demons out of this child that wants to throw itself into the fire. Mm. That the Lord is coming today and he's just saying I'm coming against the attack and the oppression of the enemy on your life. And I'm speaking life to you. And I'm praying that you get filled with the Holy Spirit. And that you connect with the life of God. And I see actually how the Lord, just like that story in Luke chapter 15, with the prodigal son, how the Lord put the new finger, a ring on the finger. That's a, it's a, it's a authority ring and a new mantle and new shoes. And the Lord says, my daughter, my son is back. And I felt that the Lord says, I'm going to supply to you because I'm walking with you, I'm partnering with you, and you're going to see needs that you never thought could get met. The Lord is going to supply those needs in your life. And also, I see the crown of joy in your life. You've always had a crown of joy, and even through difficult times, you've been one to always say, I'm going to smile. And the Lord says, that is the, the strength that I'm giving to you in your life. God bless you, Maggie. Amen. This next word is for Jesus or Emmanuel. The Lord. Okay, so what actually happened is I saw Emmanuel. Uh, he came once uh, for a prophetic word, once or twice on a Friday night or a Monday night. Um, and he write in the comments, can I please have a word for Jesus, her daughter? So I, I assume, look, look, when we see the name Jesus, then we think about Jesus, Jesus that's in heaven. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not a it's not a common name. I don't pers us. yeah, I personally don't know anybody with the name Jesus, but I know like in uh, the Spanish communities, uh, I I know definitely in um, in Israel, there's lots of people with the name Jesus. Uh, Yeshua, yeah, sure. Joshua, Jesus. So uh, I, I think there's an actual man with the name Jesus Hertado. So that's the person you're ministering to, yeah. Oh, it's not the same person. Uh, yeah, Ma Manuel put. I just put Manuel's name there in brackets because Manuel's the per person that wrote the name down. Uh, that's the handle. But he said, "Can I please have a word for Jesus, her Tordo?" All right. So Manuel, again, the my rule is, it, it would have been better if Jesus himself would have put in his <laughs> in his uh, in yes. his um, uh, handle uh, that he wants a word, or if at least if he can say. Uh, this is my brother and he asked mm. me to receive a word. So that's fine. So uh, you can minister to him. Okay. Uh, Jesus, the Lord shows me how he is, he is asking you to build these walls. How it's kind of like how, how these, how, like this town and the walls were, were, were broken down and the Lord says that I'm calling you to build it back up again. I'm calling you to raise the standard of where the Lord is moving. He is not moving on like a little fence anymore, but he is, he is building a strong wall around his people. And the Lord wants you to raise that up, raise that, that temperature in your community. I hear the Lord saying that your treasures cannot be here on on earth and, and it cannot be um about all of the um all of the physical all of the all of the money and i want a nice house and i want an amazing car and the lord says that i will provide to you what you need i will provide for you a house and i will provide for you a car but it's it, it is going to be what you need and what you need is to set your treasures in heaven and the lord shows me how when you release this this temperature this fire that is inside of you and you help to build it in the community your treasures in heaven are increasing and increasing and increasing but you place nothing above the lord who has placed that fire inside of you and that authority inside of you to uh, again raise the spiritual temperature in your community be blessed Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, so family, it was a pleasure. We took a little bit of time. Usually uh, we're a little quicker, but we thought, well, we're only ministering to 10 people today. So we're going to go a little bit longer. So, uh, but it was a pleasure for us to minister to you. So if you want to uh, support Unity with Heaven, well, let's say it like this. I'd really like for you to support Unity with Heaven. And the ways you can do it is 
you can invite a friend or a family member if they would like to receive ministry then they can also maybe watch one of the videos and see what we do uh, write their name on there the Lord has really told me you need to minister to people so obviously people need to sign up to say oh, we want to receive ministry so that's one thing that you can do the other thing that you can do is you can write us a comment uh, it's always great for us we encourage you and you can encourage us through a comment then you'll notice that I don't only have one channel we also have a channel called unity with heaven and that's where I put teachings out probably two or three teachings every single week uh, on that channel uh, then I started another channel and that's called unity intimacy with God and so there it's maybe a little bit deeper uh, it's a little bit more difficult teachings and I thought okay I want to separate it um, a little bit I used to put all the teachings onto the unity with heaven prophetic channel but I see YouTube don't like it when you mix the stuff so that's why we got the prophetic channel we got unity with heaven which is teaching but then we got intimacy with God that maybe could goes a little deeper and then i also started a, a little channel it's brand brand new i'm still figuring out how to do it but i always had a desire in my heart to do small little new segments and then declarations about what god says so i'm starting a small little channel called U unity news all right so you guys can go and check it out maybe um you're interested in Amer it's, it's mostly american news so maybe you're interested in that and then of course if you would like to support us um uh, I'm a pastor at a church, so I get a small salary from the church. So I'm definitely, I need people to, to sow into my life for me to be able to make my budget. So if you feel that is Spirit says to you, sow into um, Unity with Heaven and into the ministry, then you'll see we have a PayPal link that you can click on there. And that's where you can sow. I love each one of you. Have a fabulous day and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll finish. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Alright, sorry that it took so long. We didn't actually have to have it.